Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. Uh, it's not entirely by accident that I happen to be in Oslo today, but it gives me great uh, pride and pleasure to be, in some sense, among the very first to congratulate both uh, our dear Institute for Advanced Study Professor Robert Langlands, but also congratulate uh, the Norwegian government and the Academy in both in establishing this wonderful Abel Prize, but also uh, selecting such a terrific prize winner for this year. Um, as was uh, explained, uh, I think Robert Langlands is one of the most uh, um, influential mathematicians around, and he's clearly exemplary, and as you have heard, he has created this kind of set of overarching and interlocking conjectures and results that I think have set the course for many mathematicians in the past, but will also do in the future. And actually, I think that kind of points to a part of mathematics that not everybody is familiar with. You might think it's a, it's a growing mountain of results and theorems and equations and definition, but that there's something kind of overarching to mathematics that actually is much larger than any individual contribution. It's something that I think is exceptionally well uh, illustrated by the Langlands program. It's very rare that these things happen. Some of us are reminded of the Erlangen program of Klein in the 19th century, who basically connected geometry and symmetry. I often like to point out that uh, the most powerful element of mathematics is uh, the fact how it will connect different concepts. Now, if you think of mathematics as uh, an archaeological excavation, uh, many mathematicians think not of inventing something but discovering, then some of us might find a small fragment. Others might find a beautiful treasure, but I think Robert Langlands found the equivalent of a Rosetta Stone. Um, and uh, in some sense written in various languages. The image of Rosetta Stone was actually used by André Wey, one of his predecessors. And I think that actually uh, is quite remarkable. It allows you to translate different parts of mathematics into each other, and that is extremely rare what it happens, and it actually adds to a lot of um, depth to the field. Now, there is something similar in, in physics. You know, when Werner Heisenberg first discovered the uncertainty principle, you know the fact that an electron can either be a wave or a particle. His friend, Wolfgang Pauli, wrote back after a week and said, well, I think I understand it. If I look with my left eye, I see a particle. If I look with my right eye, I see a wave. And if open both eyes, I become crazy. <laughs> And I think something that uh, long, uh, Robert Langness was to do is to look with his left eye at number theory, the right eye at automorphic forms and symmetries, and keep both eyes open and do some remarkable mathematics. Uh, I would say, if I use an ed another metaphor, it really created an avalanche that came down the mountain is still coming down. And it really, I think, you know, shows the impact an individual can have in a large field. I'm actually extra proud to stand here because if you look at the mathematicians that uh, preceded Langlands, and I just mentioned a few names, Hermann Weil, André Wey, of course, Atlas Selberg, famous Norwegian mathematician, Harry Sandra, all four were professors at our Institute for Advanced Study, which only has a very small faculty. So I feel in some sense that a large part of the legacy of this intellectual train of thought uh, came out of our small institution. We feel particularly proud. Uh, as wasn't mentioned, Professor Langlands occupies a very nice office in Princeton, which actually is the office that Albert Einstein used to have. Uh, everybody asks, who has Einstein's office? But uh, Professor Langlands is very adamant to call it Langlands office. And I think uh, he's right. So and often I have to take camera crews and they want to see the office. I say, well, I stop at the door. And then your imagination has to take over. Uh, but anyhow, I think there's a good vibe in the office, obviously. Uh, I also want to point out that uh, Bob Langlands is a great uh, uh, lover of languages. He speaks many languages. Um, apart from English and French, uh, German, Russian, Turkish. And it's a really beautiful metaphor for the kind of mathematics that you're honoring today, which is translating between the various kind of mathematical languages that, uh, that we have. And so uh, he also has, I think many linguists have this, that they 
enjoy the fact that there are common concepts, but also very much enjoy the local idiom and the pleasure that a particular language can give. Uh, in fact, his, uh, his work, it wasn't really mentioned in the uh, announcement, uh, impacted also large parts of physics. Uh, for instance, the dualities in physics between electromagnetism, the electric and magnetic description of physical phenomena seem to be very closely connected to the Langlands program. So it's, it's growing and growing and growing. Finally, I think I want to add that uh, for many of us, uh, Robert Langlands is an inspiration, if only the very close uh, relationship he has with his wife, Charlotte. They have been almost 65 years together. Uh, she's a sculptor. I really want to uh, thank and congratulate her, her too. Uh, made some beautiful uh, portraits of mathematicians that are standing around in Princeton. So she's very much part of it. Um, Robert Langlands is almost somebody you already heard in his reaction that uh, feels very strongly about truth and honesty and doing good in the world. So I'm sure that he will kind of use this prize to, uh, to, to, to help uh, causes that he feels very strongly about this. Uh, the great thing of uh, the prize that you've awarded right now and the Langlands program is that it not only gives wonderful answers, but it generates many more questions. Uh, so I think it's somehow a gift, a uh, gift uh, to the world that keeps on giving. I think that's also true for Professor Langlands himself, but it's also true for the Abel Prize. So I want also to thank you on behalf of uh, uh, the Institute for Advanced Study uh, for establishing this prize and honoring such a great mathematician. Thank you very much.